Discussing about whether Satan is present with you all the time. Uh, I don't believe that he is myself, but the Bible says, now I want you to get what I'm, I want to give you a picture of how Satan operates. Where good is, evil is always present. Now, that don't mean that the devil has got to be there. There's, uh, the devil has got many things in the world to tempt people with. And uh, it's basically he's out to cause Christian people to fall. I, I remember back in the 80s, three gems, big big preachers. All of them fell about the same time. All of them, their first name was Jim. And you probably know who I'm talking about, but they fell. I mean, the media called it falling from grace. But there's one way of falling, and then there's another way of falling. The sinning against the Holy Ghost is a deadly thing to do. Tonight I want to preach from the fifth chapter of Acts. Jesus said in his writing, straight is the path. He said, narrow is the way that leads to the kingdom of heaven. The thing that I'm interested in preaching tonight is salvation that make sure your salvation. Amen. Make sure don't face God unprepared to meet him. And, and again, I say our ways are not God's ways. His ways are not our ways. In Romans it says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And uh, I find that I have to do this. I, I'm not sure that I'm going to even read any scriptures tonight, this afternoon, as God was speaking to me, he was speaking to me so clear on this message that I'm not sure I'll need to read any scriptures, but I am going to use the fifth chapter of Acts as a backup, but also Genesis. But in between all this, to start out with, there used to be a song about reading that teacher sign. And it, it, it was a gospel song that let you know that there was things in the way. Make sure we read the teacher sign as we go along through life. I'm not saying this to disagree or agree with anyone. I'm saying this because the Lord told me to preach and tell you thus saith the Lord God. And I'm not, again, I'm not 
have a disagreement. I'm just preaching to you the way that the Lord showed it to me this afternoon. If uh, in the garden there, there was some unforbidden fruit. This morning we was preached there. We was studying in Sunday school about the unforbidden fruit that the Bible warns us not to partake of. There's the, the, the fruit, fruits of the Spirit to start with is uh, the us as being a tree we're supposed to bear these fruits. The unforbidden fruit is the fruits of evilness. We're supposed to stay away from the fruits of evilness. I mean, what is evil besides being opposite of good? Anything that's not good, let me say this. In Matthew, Jesus said, if you're not for me, you're against me. That's right. And if you gather not, you scatter. Now that, that is the way it is. Our work is to stay more or less on the foreign line and do exactly what God wants us to do. And when we wander off that, we're wandering into the presence of evil. That may not mean that Satan's there, but I'm going to get into this tonight about the things that are presented in this world that are just like nature signs, if you want to put it that way. Uh, God started speaking to me about uh, TV and about movies about saying that you won't watch anything that's got any foul language in it but you get so tied up in that movie that you want to overlook the just maybe two or three bad words in the Corinthians, it says that you can't call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And uh, anyone that's filled with the Holy Ghost will not call him a curse. How many times do we watch things that somebody is cursing God? We accept that. I mean, us people that are filled with the Holy Ghost, we accept a sin stuff like that. Is that right? Mm -hmm. To do that, it's not right. And uh, we should not have anything, but to get on into this a little bit, you may have a movie that's got one bad word in it and you just overlook that. You'll get used to that, get immune to it. Then you get another movie that's got two or three bad words in it. You get used to that and you get immune to it. To what the Spirit of the Lord does saith the Lord God, not to be a partaker of that. That don't mean that the devil is there tempting you to do that. But you're falling into the ways of old Satan. I mean, you're falling into a trap that he wants you to fall into on the side of evilness. And uh, I'm going to move on from there into Ananias and Sapphira. What happened here? They had a partial of ground 
that they was going to sell. It was theirs. But they promised, well, they, between them, they decided what they was going to do. They was going to go into the temple and they, they was going to say that they got half as much out of that ground as they got. They, they made an agreement. I, I want you to get this tonight. It was fatal. It, that was a fatal sin to them that they done. They lied to the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that the only way that God is a spirit, the only way to worship him is in spirit and in truth. For the last four or five <coughs> Times I've preached something like that. God has laid on my heart to preach a revival message here. A revival message means that we are revived from being down in a swag and that we are lifted up higher in the Lord. There's higher heights and deeper depths within him that we can uh, enter into each day or there can be a, a bog or a swag there can be a place that you get a, in a rut and get stuck and you get satisfied being there that's not a good place to be Amen. in the Lord we need to be in the place where the the Holy Ghost and fire is burning strong and plain where we can see instead of seeing the evilness that is going on out there in the world, we can see who is it that we're serving. We're serving that God that is the true and living God today. And we're serving a God that has no failure within him. And we're serving the God that wants us to be overcomers. Amen. And that wants us to uh, have the faith. You know, the Bible says in the 11th chapter of Hebrews that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I mean, through that alone, I mean, I'm trying to present to you a God of love that has provided everything for us that we need to get through this life to live a total, pure, clean Christian life. But on the way, a little thing like this partial of ground how much did they get out of it? I don't know. But they decided instead of giving it all, they was just going to say they got half that much out of it. When they done this, they made this agreement. They made it. Satan didn't have anything to do with it. They made the agreement between themselves. But the thing that I'm telling you tonight, for good is evil is always present. It's there that you can reach out and partake it. I mean, it presented to you like the forbidden fruit was in the Garden of Eden. Just exactly the same. That was a, a type of what we go through in our life and that Unless that we pay attention to what we're doing, we're going to fall by the wayside. I mean, it's been a habitual thing all through the Bible that people fell through the, their, by the wayside. The three preachers that fell so hard back in the 80s, sometimes I try to watch one of them on TV that is still going strong. I think 
one of them passed away and laid me last year. And the other one, I was surprised. I seen him two or three years ago. He was on the a Trinity broadcast, I believe, and he's still live and doing pretty well, but the one big one that's on TV all the time now, after what he done, went out and picked up prostitutes and lusted after these prostitutes. He, he let lust grow into his heart so strong that, and the Bible says, make sure that your sins will find you out. He got caught doing this. It, whose fault was it? Was it the devil's fault? It, it was the one that committed the sin. He's the one that, uh, he says he's been restored, that he's Christian. I have to believe that. He says he is. I'm not his judge and until the day of judgment we'll see how it stands. But to stand there and to uh, face God after being a minister that was capable of getting the gospel to the world and fallen, I'm trying to show you what a terrible thing it is tonight to fall away from the grace of God. How, not just terrible, it's a critical thing. I mean that if we would take a chance on losing our salvation, our eternal time. I mean, there is no time through eternity. It's a, a place where there is no end. But to think about losing that over, the Bible says, a few minutes of pleasure, that would be such a terrible thing. And uh, it happens just like Ananias and Sapphira. Here they, they walked, and Ananias walked in first. And he went up and he, handing them this amount of money. And uh, he, uh, he kept back, it says he kept back part of the price. And as he done that, he died right there, hmm. right there at the altar. Yep. Then Ananias, his wife, walked in and done the same thing. Peter said, did you received so much for your property? She said, yes. They, the ones that buried her husband was, they was coming back to the temple just in time to pick her up and take her and bury her. Now this is what the Lord has told me to preach tonight. It, he said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. That I change not. He said, my ways don't change. But in this day and time, we're trying to say what went on in Sodom and Gomorrah is okay. Mm -hmm. But it's not okay. Amen. Our loved ones are going to be lost that are partaking of such things. I mean, it, it's sad to say, Brother Bob, that it's that way. It is the written word of God. Yes. And it cannot be changed. I mean, uh, we could change it all day long. We could completely do away with the original writing of the Bible and change it and make a Bible that we want. We could do that. But what good would it be to us? And, and all it would do, we would be lying to ourselves. Right. And if we didn't die in the presence of God, we would stand in the presence of God after death. 
the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, and after death, the judgment. So we know that there's no way to escape that except through the blood of Jesus Christ. And if we walk that straight and narrow way, that is the way that we're going to make it into the kingdom of heaven to be anything, any, any kind of a sinner. I mean, to live in sin is what I'm talking about. To live in to sin, to be pulled away from God, and to live in sin, we're going to die lost. I mean, that is just what the Word of God says. It says that you have got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the way to do that, you've got to pray. And you've got, you've got to want Jesus Christ to be Lord over your life. The, uh, it says in Corinthians that uh, the only way that you can call him Lord is through the, the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. All, I want to be able to call him Lord tonight. I, I believe in that, and I've got wrote down there, I believe that proves that when you get saved, you get the Holy Ghost. But there is the baptism of a, that you're baptized into the Holy Ghost where the gifts of God come from. Amen. In that particular uh, uh, scripture, it says that the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. That's in Romans where it, it says the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Uh, and each one of us knows, Brother Bob, uh, what uh, kind of gifts and callings we've got and what we're called into that we're capable of, of doing. I didn't want to be a preacher. I mean, I didn't choose to be a preacher. But God called me, and he would not turn me loose. And I'm so thankful today that he wouldn't turn me loose. And if he turned me loose, I probably would have never had a chance to have been saved. But... Uh, he knew what he was doing. He knows how to speak to you, Brother Bob. Amen. He knows how to get your attention. Amen. This afternoon, I started uh, to think on what am I going to preach about tonight? Uh, uh, what scriptures am I going to use? Right away, he, uh, he reminded me about Adam and Eve. They was the first two creation that God created in this world, the present world that we live in today. They was it. They started the human race. And uh, they lived in innocence for how many years? I do not know how many years they lived in innocence. They didn't know what good and bad was because God didn't put that kind of knowledge in their mind. But this uh, fruit was out there. Was it actually a fruit tree? I, I doubt it. If it was, it may have been fruit and it, it may have not been. It may have been that something that they took up that woke their mind up to let them know that they had done something wrong. You know what? The presence of God wasn't there with them when they done wrong. But it didn't take him long to identify what they had done when in the cool of the evening he was walking through the garden and he found out that they realized that they was naked and they was ashamed of it. Before this, they didn't even realize there was any such thing as that. How slick the powers of Satan is, is what I'm preaching to you about tonight. How slick. And you can convince yourself 
a little is okay. The Bible says the little foxes are what spoils the vines. The little foxes get under the vines, the great vines, and they nibble on them until they kill the vine. That's exactly what happens to us as Christians. We allow little things that we say there is nothing wrong with. Oh, let me tell you that tonight, there is something wrong with everything that the Bible says is wrong. That's right. He says the way is straight. Oh, the path is just as straight as it can be. And the way is narrow that, that we walk. And if, if it was that way back when Jesus was talking in Matthew, it's still that way today. The day that we're walking in today, it's not changed. I mean, uh, you can uh, rewrite the words in that part of the Bible if you want to, uh, but the, uh, if you take away or if you add to, you're going to be held accountable for that. And the ones that are trying to take away from the Word of God or that's trying to add to, to add glory to where glory does not belong, let me tell you something, that's a lie just uh, as much as Ananias and Sapphira. Yep. The only way to worship God is in spirit and truth. And Amen. because he is a spirit Amen. and he knows everything. Amen. He knows our needs, Amen. but he wants us to ask him. Amen. He wants us to go to him and seek him and depend on him. And without him, we can do nothing. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I seen Dakota's little girl with her hands up. Amen. <laughs> I believe she might have been trying to preach a little bit. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, but tonight, Brother Bob, it's pretty plain that, I mean, not one of us will have an excuse for saying, well, I didn't know that. I didn't right. understand that. You know why? You've got it right here. Amen. And if you want to know it, Amen. all you got to do, if, if, if you turn to Jesus, the Bible says you must be born again. Amen. If you turn to him and get a hunger in your heart for Jesus, let me tell you something. He'll open up a way to you that leads straight to the throne of God. Yes. And you will have a direct connection with him. I mean, there's no one that can get in and interfere and cut you off. There's no signal out there that's strong enough to cut you off uh, from the word of God. Amen. You may be on the cell phone, and you may may get zapped right <laughs> off the air. I mean, I, I've been talking to my daughter, especially, and something happens to her phone, and all of a sudden, we lose connection. But you know what? I never have been talking to God and lost connection with him, Brother Bob. Amen. He's always on the line. Amen. I, I don't care what time it is, you know, I've never caught him asleep, Dakota. He, he don't sleep. He's always Amen. wide awake. Amen. And he's always, he's excited Amen. because we're his children. Amen. You know how exciting it is for your children to come and get in touch with you, uh, Brother Bob. Amen. And if they come and say, I love you. Oh, and I've got a son that was a police officer. He never hangs a phone up without he says, I love you, Dad. And I mean, that means so much to me to know that my kids love me. Every one of them tells me they love me. And you know what I would really love to see? How much they love God by saying, God, I won't never fail you, I'm going 
I'm going to be obedient because your word says not to fail the assembling of yourselves together, Amen. especially as the evil day approaches. I believe we're in that today. Amen. In the evil day that the Bible talks about. Amen. It's evil out there. I mean, we live in the holy presence of the Lord. But out there, I'm talking about away from God. It's evil. We live in a, the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. The Bible says we do. But I can't quote that right now. I might blank on it. But uh, speaking of dwelling in the secret place of the Almighty, he shall abide under the shadow of the all, uh, anyway, that's not right, but that's getting brown folks to it. But uh, that's the promise of God that we, if we dwell in the secret place, that we can abide under his shadow. And that means under the protection of God. Amen. That we are protected. We may have to go through the fire or we may be in the lion's den, but Jesus went through the fire and he went through the lion's den. Amen. Every day is uh, sometimes there's uh, problems that come up that we have to face. We're supposed to be grown intelligent people that can handle things. When something comes up that's bigger than you are, do you know where you go? You go to the one that nothing is too big right. for him to handle. Amen. He, we go to the problem solver. That's right. And he will solve that problem for us. I'm thankful I serve that God. Amen. He asked Peter who he said that he was after the other disciples had said you're uh, one person or another person. And, but Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the true and the living God. He's the one that we serve. He is the one that came from the portal to glory. Amen. Gave his life on the old rugged cross. Died there with this love in his heart, saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I mean, that is a lot of love. But he came here for a reason. He was in agreement with his father. I'm going to go to the world and I'm going to be an ultimate, ultimate sacrifice for the world, for the ones that want to be saved. All they've got to do is accept me, believe in me, believe that I am the Messiah and they can have salvation and that they can spend eternity in heaven and if if they choose not to that that's their choice no one's going to make them and but we are living in the agreement that will and testimony like i said this morning the will and testimony testament that jesus come here he died so we can be an heir to that I mean, it's just like a death here on earth and someone got a big lot of, of uh, property and all kinds of stuff and they've got heirs and someone has to uh, tell each heir what they're going to receive. And Jesus is the one that is going to tell us what we receive. Amen. He's going to hand out our blessings. Huh. 
or is he going to be the one that says depart from me? He wants it to the next one. I'm not you. I hope that you'll pay attention to this tonight because it is the word of God. And unless we live by the word of God, we're putting our, our eternal life in danger. I mean, uh, we can believe whatever we want to believe, and it won't be true unless it is the Bible, Amen. unless we got Bible to back it up. Amen. And we we have eternal security, but it's not like a lot of people say it is. If we live for Christ, we've got eternal security. Yes, we do. And then. I mean, no one can take that away from us. Amen. But we can waste it away. I mean, uh, the Bible tells us to sin not. Amen. Jesus, every time he uh, performed miracles, he said, go and sin, sin no more. Amen. And I really believe tonight that that's our... Uh, I can't think of the right word right now. It, it's our our responsibility, putting it one way, to live a strict Christian life for God. Yeah. But I mean, uh, you can argue about it, but what good is it? To? That's right. And uh, it's what does say the Lord God it counts. Well, that's my message for tonight. I don't feel led to make my own call. I feel led that I feel like that I've preached what God wants me to preach, and I feel like I've preached it in a clear enough manner that everyone can understand tonight. That take the Word of God. Go for Jesus. I mean, He is our way of salvation go for Jesus don't don't be fooled and don't don't think that it's not worth fighting for it's the most precious thing we have the fight is to fight off the power of the enemy I, I'm a soldier in the Lord's army Amen. I, that, that's what I am I'm a soldier I'm supposed to fight the enemy and to be able to come out victorious after every battle. I might lose one once in a while, but that don't mean that I'm conquered. That's I'm right. Gonna, if I fall down, I'm not going to lay there. I'm going to get up and I'm going to take right on off right where I fell down at. And that I'm going to tell the devil he's a liar. If, if he tries to convince me that I'm not saved or whatever. But, and most of the time that that your own self is your worst enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, you either have faith to believe in God or you don't have enough faith to believe in Him at all. I mean, He, he wants us to have faith to believe what the Bible says Amen. and stand on that. Okay, and that, that's it for tonight. Until next Sunday morning or the next appointed time. Uh, anyone got anything you want to say before I dismiss? Keep the head in prayer. I just talked to him a while ago. He ain't feeling good. Yeah. No, uh, he's had a pretty rough way to go for a week or so, a couple weeks. Uh, pray for me this coming week. I'm still weak from what happened yesterday. And, uh, but I am a lot better than I was this time yesterday. Uh, Praise the Lord. Yeah. I stand and will be dismissed. Yeah.